Hi there. Today, we're along Cascade River in western Washington, right down in the floodplain on the banks of this river. Now, living along a river is really great if you're a tree. It offers a lot of advantages. In the summer, it means you're going to have access to plenty of water because of a high water table. It also means you're going to have access to nutrient-rich soil brought down by the river. Now, the problem that goes with that is nutrient-rich soil from the river is often carried down by floodwaters. If you're a tree growing along a river in western Washington, you need to be well adapted to survive throughout all of those disturbances caused by flooding. We're going to look today at a tree that is particularly well adapted to survive in what we would call a riparian ecosystem. The ecosystem that borders the rivers, streams, and lakes of western Washington. Today we're going to be talking about the black cottonwood. It's a pretty large tree that's going to grow here in western Washington as well as a lot of other western North American states. Um, and what we're going to look at first are some tips and tricks for how to identify this tree if you come across it in the wild. First of all, the bark's going to be a light gray color and it's going to have a lot of little furrows on it. When the tree is younger, it's going to be pretty smooth though. The leaves are going to be chordate, that means they're heart shaped, and they're going to be kind of a yellowish green color. In the fall, this tree's deciduous, so those leaves are going to turn bright yellow and fall off onto the ground. In the springtime, the reason this tree is called cottonwood is all of the seeds that it will produce are going to be attached to this kind of fluffy stuff that looks a lot like cotton. That's going to be carried off by the wind. You're going to notice it all over where there's cottonwoods growing. Now, that brings us to where do cottonwoods like to grow? Cottonwoods need a lot of sunlight to survive, and so the main place you're going to find them here is in riparian areas along waterways or other areas where you're going to see a lot of disturbance. How that works is when a river floods, it's going to take out a lot of the trees that are growing along the edge of it. That leaves a lot of open space. That open space has a lot of sunlight available, and cottonwood trees are able to move in and grow in that open space. Now, unfortunately, given enough time, other trees will come in and kill the cottonwoods because as they get taller, they shade out those cottonwoods, and since the cottonwoods need sunlight, they can't make it anymore. But the good news is, is along these rivers, floods happen enough that there's always open space for more cottonwoods to grow. Let's head out into the forest and take a look at the cottonwoods in their native environment. Right now, I'm out in the forest with my friend the black cottonwood tree. Black cottonwood trees like to live in areas near waterways, places with streams, creeks, maybe ponds or bogs. In western Washington, this would be what we call the niche that they occupy, the place in the ecosystem where they do best. Now, waterways, rivers, streams, those are all very finicky things, and they're prone to a lot of disturbance. That means there's constant change going on around western Washington's rivers. In order to survive all that change, the black cottonwood has to have a lot of really good adaptations in order to thrive in that habitat and keep their competitive edge over other trees that also might want to move into that area. We're going to learn about a couple of those adaptations that this tree has developed to survive in its ecosystem. The first adaptation that we're going to talk about is how cottonwoods grow, and that is fast. Cottonwoods need a lot of sunlight to be able to grow, and that means they can't germinate in the really thick, dense conifer forests that we have here in western Washington. The good news is, is that along a river, oftentimes flooding will take down trees that were there before and open up new land for the cottonwoods to move in on, places that are open to bright sunlight coming in. Now, there's a whole lot of other trees that are going to want to move into that space as well. So the black cottonwood, like the one behind me here, is going to have to move in quickly to be able to jump on that. This tree behind me is only about 20 feet tall, but it may only be a few years old. In fact, black cottonwood trees just nine years old have been known to reach heights of over 50 feet tall. That's absolutely crazy. It's a pretty short-lived tree, often not living more than 100 or 200 years, but in that time, it can achieve really impressive heights of over 200 feet and over six feet in diameter. Really, really handy if you need to move in on new sites, grow quickly to avoid getting shaded out by other trees. The second trait that we are gonna talk about that helps black cottonwoods to survive in its constantly changing habitat zone is gonna be phenotypic variation. Now that's a big word, so let's dive a second into what is phenotypic variation? Now put simply, phenotypic variation 
simply means that members of the same species can sometimes have different traits. An example in humans of this would be, I'm a human and I have blue eyes. Now, I have another friend who is also human and they have brown eyes. We're still the same species, but some of our traits vary. Same thing with trees, except that they don't have eyes. Now with me right now, I have a selection of black cottonwood leaves. And if we take a look at them, we're gonna be able to see that these leaves vary significantly in size. All of them are different sizes, different shapes. This first leaf here and this little leaf right here both came from the same tree. And yet, look at the size difference on them. That's an example of phenotypic variation that we might see on black cottonwood trees. So why would different leaf sizes uh, really help this tree to survive in this habitat? Well, remember that black cottonwoods crave a lot of sunlight. Having really large leaves at the top of the tree might help that tree to get a lot more sunlight while at the same time shading out competition that might be trying to grow up around it. Those little leaves at the base of the tree, it doesn't matter for the leaves there to be quite as large because there's probably not as much sunlight down at that level anyway. Now that's one way that these trees can demonstrate phenotypic variation, that big word that we learned. Uh, but another way that they do that is in the actual shape of the trees themselves. Behind me here, just a little bit back, is a pretty standard Western Washington black cottonwood. It's got a very strong central trunk going straight up for the sky and reaching for that sunlight. Now here in Western Washington, there's a whole lot of other trees competing for that sunlight resource. But if you were to find a black cottonwood growing in a different habitat, somewhere on the east side of the Cascades, for example, where there's ample sunlight and not many other trees, you might instead find a tree with a whole lot of very spreading branches, not getting quite so tall, but instead spreading out to capitalize on a whole lot of open space and getting all that sunlight from well far around it instead of trying to get above other trees to get it. That's one more example of how phenotypic variation is an adaptation that helps black cottonwoods survive in their habitats. Because the black cottonwood grows so quickly, it often will develop very weak wood. That's something important to remember when you're looking for a camping site in Western Washington. Don't ever set up and sleep underneath a black cottonwood tree, especially during a storm. That weak wood means that high winds can often break off large branches or even knock down the whole tree. Keep your eye out for a camping site underneath stronger, slower growing trees when you're camping. We're gonna talk about one more adaptation that black cottonwoods have that allow them to thrive in this riparian ecosystem. That's gonna be the way that these trees reproduce. Cottonwoods are called cottonwoods because of the fluff that their seeds are attached to in the springtime when they're released. It looks like little tiny balls of cotton. Now, those little fluffs allow the seeds to be picked up by the wind, carried to a further distance than they would otherwise be. They might also help those seeds to float on the top of water. That's really helpful for a tree that likes growing in riparian areas where there's creeks and streams and lakes nearby. Basically, it just allows for the seeds to be dispersed to a further area. But there's even more that allows the cottonwood to reproduce very effectively in this high disturbance habitat. The same river floods that might open up new habitats for the black cottonwood to grow on and get the sunlight that it needs might also wipe out mature stands of black cottonwood. Fortunately, this tree has an advantage on getting a jump on the new growth in those recently opened sites. That advantage is that this tree can actually come back from the dead. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <coughs> what? Oh, wait, no, that's not, oh, okay. Sorry about that. So black cottonwoods don't actually come back from the dead, but they do have the ability to send out new roots and new branches from trees that have been knocked over by flooding or some other disturbance. Let's say that a black cottonwood branch breaks off in a flood and is carried downstream to a new site that has a lot of sunlight. Rather than just being a dead branch, like with most trees, that branch might actually send out a new root system from the bottom and send out new branches from the top. And rather than having just a dead black cottonwood branch sitting on the bank, you actually end up with a small grove of new black cottonwood trees that are clones of the original tree. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The indigenous people of Western North America, where the black cottonwood grows, were the first to discover many uses for this incredible tree. 
One of those uses is as a food source. The inner bark of the black cottonwood is very sweet and delicious to eat. Um, and to this day, many indigenous people still use this tree as a source of medicine. Uh, the resin in the buds of the tree can be used to make uh, anti-inflammatory salves and tinctures. Those can be taken internally to help with lung issues such as bronchitis. They can also be applied externally to cuts. Um, really incredible stuff that you can get from the black cottonwood tree. Black cottonwoods are also used by the pulp and paper industry in order to make paper for books and magazines. It is important to remember though that cutting down a tree specifically for making pulp and paper might not be quite as sustainable as using leftover waste wood from other trees used by the lumber industry. In addition to the many human benefits that we can receive from this tree, black cottonwood also provides very valuable habitat along these riparian zones. Many different species of birds and mammal use this tree for homes, for a food source. Beavers in particular are very, very fond of eating cottonwoods and using them in the construction of their dams. And cottonwoods also provide bank stabilization. They're shallow roots holding together a lot of the soils in those riparian ecosystems and building them up. Because these trees are deciduous, they will drop their leaves every single fall. And that makes a very nutrient rich soil underneath black cottonwood forests. Now, it's important to remember that human actions can have a negative impact on black cottonwood forests in western Washington and across the rest of this tree's range. Rivers are beautiful places that humans like to hang out, just like the black cottonwood tree. But we need to make sure that we aren't impacting this tree's native range too much because these riparian habitats are very important as what we would call buffer zones, areas that can absorb the impact of damaging things like floods or pollution. In the future, western Washington is expected to have a lot more rain in the wintertime, and trees like the black cottonwood might actually really help in keeping flood levels down and negative impacts from occurring on human settlements further downstream. By protecting these riparian habitats, we can actually ensure our future success as well. The next time you're out in the forest, take a look around and see if you can spot a black cottonwood tree. And remember how this tree connects you with the rest of the ecosystem.